It's like what? Well, mine's mine's professional. It's not personal, so it's all good. All right, let's not please. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, what I'd like to do is show you how to graph negative three times x plus three squared plus four. All right. So to graph this, what I want to do is I just want to kind of go through. Um, I want to kind of show this. How are the transformations going to affect this graph? So the first thing I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is graph the y equals x squared. And that was with question number one, I believe, as well. So to graph this equation, we could go back to, you guys have to know, this is what we call our parent function. You guys have to know at least what the parent function looks like. And then it's going to make using this method very, very simple. Rather than doing all the stuff we've done before, let's understand what the x squared graph looks like. All right. Now we could represent this with a table to remember what it looks like. Um, and if we did y equals y equals x squared, right? So if we did an xy table for this graph, I'm just going to do a couple points: negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Negative two squared is four. Negative one squared is one. Zero squared is zero. One and four, right? That's kind of using like the old method. You can just um, turn it into the black box, and you'll be fine. Okay. So to graph this, if I go up one over one. Left one, up one. Up two over four. One, two, three, four. Are you going to come back next class, Fred? OK, good. So therefore, that's what this graph looks like. Right? We need to make sure it goes to these important points. That's going to be very important when we look at our dilation that's going to affect the graph. So now let's just look at what transformations are in our function that's happening. Here, my vertex is at 0, 0, right? Now my vertex is at negative 3. Four. Remember, the function is x opposite of h, right? So you got to take the opposite of your h value when finding the vertex. So to graph this function, my new, my new point is at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Does everybody see that? So I've moved from 0, 0 to negative 3, 4, meaning this has told me to shift my graph, sorry, shift my graph three units to the left, and shift my graph four units up. Right? Now let's take another thing. Here, my a was positive, so my vertex was a minimum. Here, my a is negative, so therefore that means it's going to be a maximum. That means my graph is now going to open down, right? I don't know what the graph looks like right now, but I know that it opens down. I know this is the maximum point. All right, so now what we need to do is now we can go and determine what the um, intercept is, right? And use an intercept just like you guys did before. Plug in, so to find the y-intercept, let's plug x equal to 0. So if I put a 0 in for the x, this is like doing the table again. 0 in for x, 0 plus 3 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 9 times negative th 3 is going to be a negative 27. Um, negative 20, um, sorry, 9, wait a minute. 9, yeah, 9, negative 27. Negative 27 plus 4 is going to be a negative 21. So at 0, I'm going to go down to 21. Now that's, that's a lot, right? That's like, that's kind of, I'm like, uh, let's just see how else maybe could I do it, because negative 21 is going to be way down here. All right? So how else could we figure out what these points are? So let's take a look at this. If you guys look at my general table, what I'm doing is notice the difference between the points, up 1 over 1, right? Up 2 over 4. Well, now what I'm doing is all I'm doing is I'm multiplying that number by a multiplier of 3. Because remember, when the absolute value of a is greater than 1, that compresses it horizontally, or sometimes say vertically stretches it, right? So that means my graph is going to be skinnier. So let's take a look at, this is at negative 3. Um, let's take a look at how the direction. So for the first point, I go over 1, up 1, right? But now, I'm going to multiply that by a multiplier of 3. So instead of going over 1, up 1, or over 1, up 1, I'd go over 1, up 3. However, we're going in the down direction. So I'm going to go over 1, down 3 units. 1, 2, 3. And then usually what we did is we go over 2, up 4. Well, now, since it's in a negative direction, I need to multiply that by 3. So I'm going to go over 2, down 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we can reflect these two points over our axis of symmetry. So therefore, my graph is going to look like that. All right, there's got to be some questions. So let me have them. Now, if you guys notice, this is going to continue down, and it would cross you know, like at y equals negative 27. But since it's going to be kind of off our graph, that's what we work with. Yes? Um, just remember, whenever your a is negative, you're always going to have a maximum point. So that's just something in your algebra somewhere you got something went wrong. And you can plug in these numbers, right? You guys can go back to your table. Plug in the numbers. Plug in negative 2. See what you get. When you plug in negative 2, you should get 1. OK? Yes? Huh? How do I or plot it? OK. I'll go back one more time. So you understand this, right? But now we're dealing with the <coughs> negative. So that's kind of like doing it like this. That means we're graphing it in the negative direction. Right? So instead of going over 1, now you're going to go down 1. Right? You go over 1, down 1. However, our graph is not going over 1, down 1. You're going to multiply your end value by 3. So you take whatever your multiplier is, that's your dilation. <laughs> that affects your graph. Um, that affects it if it's going to be you know, it's skinnier or wider. So you take, so what I'm essentially doing with this is I'm just multiplying each one of my values by 3. Okay, So now I'm going over 1, but instead of going down 1, I'm going to go down 1 times 3, which is what? Down 3. So I'd go down 1, 2, 3. However, there's a shift up there. So we're going up 4. So when I go down 3, I'm only going to be at 1. And then the next point is to go over 2, and then you go down 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? But now I'm going to multiply it by 3. So I go over 2 down not 4, but down 4 times 3, which would be down 12. And remember, I'm starting from my vertex, which was already up 4. So if I go down 12 and I started at up 4, I should be at negative 8. Right? If I do my last <coughs> record, carry the 1. Good. Questions? You guys want to do an easier one first? Another? Sure. Which one would you guys like me to do? <laughs> 